You ready? Yeah. All right, man, here we go. Uh, yo, what's good, man? It's your boy, Derek Brinch, at StrikeSevenSports.com. Today's episode of the Strike Seven Sports Podcast, episode number 33. We're going to um, talk about our latest uh, ways from the NFL 2021 season. Um, it's still, you know, in um, overreaction mode, but, you know, we're going to do our best to see past that and just give you the facts of what's going on. Um, There's going to be another roundtable discussion with the, with the uh, team, Brian Botter, Leo Suberry, two great uh, contributors, two great writers up on uh, Memphis in the Memphis area. Um, it's a pleasure to have them on with me tonight. And I'm just going to go ahead and start it off with my uh, three takeaways from uh, week two. And number one, I'm going to start off with the Tennessee Titans. Finally get back on track. They won and won on any uh, record column. They went down to uh, defeat the Seattle Seahawks in uh, overtime by score 33 to 30. Um, Derrick Henry, you know, every time the, the Titans try to, uh, I guess, get away from what they are, that their identity, um, Derrick Henry just, you know, comes back and just reminds them, hey, look, we're running team first. We got, it's nice that we got Julio Jones and, um, AJ Brown on the outside, but we're a running team. And he showed showed us why this uh, this last Sunday with his performance. He ran for 182 yards rushing, three touchdowns, and um they won the game in overtime. But um when I cut the game on, you know, I was watching the Saints get um, you know, obliterated by Carolina. <laughs> but I cut the game on and it was thirty to sixteen at the time I started, and I was just like, Yep, here we go. Times are going to be bad again. And then when I cut it on, Derrick Henry got the ball, ran, ran in for that long TD, got to 23, got it back. He went back to Derrick Henry, another touchdown. And um, Seattle, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know, I don't know, man. I don't know if Pete Carroll has lost his way as a, a defensive-minded coach, but they're not that team that they used to be when it comes to playing uh, good defense, and the Titans were able to take advantage of it. And he went in overtime. So, I mean, Titans, they get back in the win column. Um, I picked them to win the division in the beginning of the season. And I'm going to stick to that, you know, despite Indianapolis um, in the division uh, with Carson Wentz. But it looks like they're 0-2 right now. And I don't know the word, the final word on uh, Carson Wentz's injury. But – I'm going to roll the Tennessee Titans to win this division. But we'll just go around and just you share your thoughts on uh, that takeaway right there. Uh, since it's my team, I think it's appropriate for me to go first. Um, go ahead. That freaking pub, so when we came back, uh, I think the Seahawks either 52 now or 54 now when they had a fourth quarter lead, and the Titans ended that. Um, the Titans showed a lot of brilliance. As much as you want to give Derrick Henry credit, and he did, but I think the defense deserves a shitload of credit. The way they were to hold uh, Russell Wilson, uh, I don't think I can't remember. Did they score in the fourth quarter? But they were going to uh, not give up too many points to allow the uh, the Titans to come back. So that was really, really impressive. And now with the cold situation, who knows if Carson Wentz is going to play? I like them to win this game coming up too. He does uh, live. Well, um, to be, <laughs> to be honest, I just think the t- the Titans are the best team among a bad bunch of teams. If you want to keep it real, like they, not saying the Titans don't aren't legitimately like good team, but I think it, in their in their like when they stick to their foundation, which is a run, right. a, sound run a, a running team and control the game team, that's who they are. But when they stick to their roots, they're a good team. But I'm just not impressed by the defense. Defense they gave up thirty points. To uh, you gave up thirty points two back two weeks in a row. You giving up CTA points the last the first two games. Hey, that's thirty four games. You're not gonna keep winning games like that. And I know you got the coach this week with a bad old quarterback. But I think, and I, and I know it's it's a young guy, Jacob Eason is gonna get the start. But I think he can actually can have some. He can actually can do some damage against this defense because there's not a bad defense to make your first start. Against. It's not. It's not. 
the defense, the Titans defense is just pathetic. <laughs> you saw what Colin Murray did, which, yeah, I know he did the same thing pretty much against the Vikings, who was a real good defense. But you, we also saw what happened like, with, with Russell Wilson. And so he was he was having his way really early going – Going, he was really having his way, and then they they did make some stops late in the game. But still, I this is like we said, sixty eight points over your first two contests, not good at all. Yeah, yeah. Finish. Uh, I can add something. I mean, I see what you. But when you look at Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson, those are arguably two of the top ten best QBs in the game. So, yeah, the defense can do better, but, I mean, it's not like they were playing jobs. They were playing some legit QBs and mobile QBs, too. And so I think – I can't – I can't. I simply can't just give you that pass. You know why? Because the fact of the matter is this. You have a defensive head coach, the man who's, who's grand, Mike Vapor, won Super Bowls as a, defensive, as, as a defensive player. He's been on a successful defensive, like, coach. You, I can't give you the pass of you're playing good quarterback because I've seen good quarterbacks get shut down, and I'm not saying I'm not saying you're supposed to hold them to just you're supposed to hold them to the bare minimum, but you're at least supposed to contain them, and they, they couldn't even contain. I'm not asking you to stop them, Matthew. You can show some sort of contain, and if you want to be a really good team, good teams stop good quarterbacks, and I and I can't just simply say, oh, he's going to get Kyle Murray, he's going to get Russell Wilson. Well. Yeah, you're gonna play the best. You're supposed that's when you're supposed to show up and be among the best if you want to be a legitimate contender in the AFC. And apparently, Titans aren't ready for that. If you want to just keep it honest, I think this guy's just a little excited because his Raiders are two and a. So I have that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You want to be like that? Okay. I'm not just keeping it real. My Raiders Raiders played three top – we played two top 15 quarterbacks. And you saw what happened. Yeah, I mean, hey, the first game of the season. Come on, man. Well, Lamar. We played against Lamar first game. And Big Ben is still a top 15 guy. That's still a top 15 that we get. Yeah. I gotta give you that, man. The Raiders did two and I didn't expect that, but you know, hey, the Raiders don't have the issues at the beginning of the season. Is you know after in November, <laughs> that's what the problem is. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, yeah, and that's the thing for the Raiders, and and that's why a lot of fans, like I'm a lot, of, I'm in a lot, of, part of a lot of like Raider groups on like Facebook and other websites, like in terms of like I look at the group chats, they're not really excited yet because you know this team has a picture of a foe late in season. We talked about this. Yeah, on uh, previous uh, episodes, uh, DBS. So like, I'm excited, but like, and I also look at the context of this. Like, we being two teams that a lot of people didn't think we could beat. So I, I do take some out of that though. Like in terms of, no, I don't think a lot of people gave us a chance. Like, like, really legitimately thought we was gonna beat Baltimore, or really was gonna beat the Steelers, considering what they had did to the the Bills the week before. But so for them to really rise up and like. And take and take control of those games, especially with the defense. I'm really proud of the Raiders for that. Like those are two games that a lot of people didn't think that we were in, and they won. So like, I can, I gotta give them. They- yeah, I mean Derek Carr playing pretty good. Look like the MVP candidate. I gotta give it to him. You know, um, sticking to Raider football. You know, you got the, the speedy wide receiver outside. Running game, John Gruden like, likes to run the football. A lot of people mm-hmm. don't talk about that, but John Gruden likes to run the football with his running back, and it was good so far. But anyways, man, my uh, my second take, takeaway, we just talked about it a little, for a little bit, and that's Arizona Cardinals, man. And uh, Kyler Murray won another game. This time was a little close with Minnesota. Another um, team that's I think is really good, but – they don't live up. They never live up to their potential, despite the the weapons that they have on defense, on offense. It's never they never live up to their to their potential. They should win that division, but they don't. But Kyler Murray, man, yeah, another big game. Threw for four hundred yards, three touchdown passes against the Vikings. And I have said this in the past about Kyler Murray, and I just I've been watching the guy since he was at Oklahoma. I just watched his talent. I just get out of the pocket, make plays. He has an arm to get the ball down the field. I think Kyle Murray is going to be the next 
five thousand yards passing, man. I think he can go for five thousand yards. He has the tools um, needed to be a great quarterback. Um, weapons on the outside, they're doing everything right around to build a team around this guy. Um, they're not they're not paying him yet. Um, got good wide receivers. Running game is is okay. Defense, you finally got uh Chandler Jones back. You got JJ Watt. I haven't really heard a lot from JJ Watt yet about what he's doing. But he got Uda Baker, Chandler Jones, JJ Watt. Great football team. I'm gonna ask y'all, man, if 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 he keeps this up, do you think Kyle Murray is the MVP? Could win the MVP this year over guys like a um a Mahomes or a Lamar Jackson? Derek Carr. Um, um I think Yes, if he compete, if he keeps it up, yeah, he could be in discussion. But also, they're gonna have to win some games. Like Arizona, like you said, Arizona does have a lot of talent. They have the women, so it's gonna really be a uh, can they can he, not he just play well? Can he keep the team at a winning level that is at now? Because yeah, they play well. Yeah, yeah, he played well. But also, he played well in the past two years, and they haven't always been winning teams. Hey, uh, we have a question right here. Um, someone asked, "Does you think Arizona would be a playoff team this year?" Uh, for well, me, uh, beginning of the season, I had them there in my bubble teams as a, being a playoff, a bubble team that can make the playoffs, but not really sure because I'm kind of not, still not so long King, Cliff Kingsbury as a coach. And I'm not, you know, I'm not. It's still early in the season, man. If things could change, schemes change, game plans change, so. They know Bubba too. Yeah, I've really been excited about what Kyler Murray has done so far, but I'm not going to be a prisoner. Um, and I, I've, we've seen this maybe before. Last year, they started out pretty good. My question is, how will they finish? Because even though um, they're 2 0, the 49ers are 2 0, even though the Seahawks lost, we know they'll be there in the end. And uh, who's the other team in the NFC West? Let me see. The Rams. The Rams. Yeah. Yeah. We never yeah. know they'll be good. It's the best division in football. The so Rams. Until I see it, I'll be good. Same here. What about you, man? Got anything else to add? All right, man. I'll go to my next takeaway. This is my last one. Not as good to y'all, but um, Carolina Panthers, 2-0. Um, they had a good performance against the Saints, a Saints team that dropped 38 points on the Green Bay Packers. But looking at it now, the Green Bay Packers' defense may not be that good. And the Saints, well, the Panthers sacked Jameis Winston three times, got him to throw the ball, got him to get back to bad Jameis, got him to turn the ball over two times in the game, two interceptions. And what I, I watched the game – and I saw the defense. It looks pretty good, man. There's a good, there's a bright future with that defense. It moves sideline to sideline. They can get after the quarterback. And I'm not saying they won't they're gonna win the division. But they may give um the the the, the Buccaneers a word for a run. And when they have whenever they face them, they gotta they gotta they play Houston this Thursday night. So that might be a little test for them as a short weekend, but one ask y'all, man. Just y'all think the Panthers are um, could be the players in the NFC, like in the upper echelon with this defense, the way it's looking so far. I uh, always thought the Panthers would be like the Panthers would be a good team this year because they they got their most back in Chris McCaffrey. They got a lot of a lot of the defense was uh injured, like they had a lot of uh inconsistent last year on defense. Boy, I think we should defense that takes leaps and steps forward this season. And I think that, that due to that, due to those improvements on defense, and also I think Bridgewater, the replacement of Bridgewater with Donald was key because Donald is, is a guy who really needs the right coach to get him, to get the best out of him. I think Matt Rule is getting the best out of him with a guy, a guy who knows how to work with, uh, how to work with young talent, being that he's been a successful college coach. And I feel like he knows how to work with quarterbacks because he and get the best out of him because even keep in mind he had PJ Walker who was on the bag of quarterback. He had him able to get the best out of him last season, the best he could get. And like obviously with, with a guy like Sam Donald who has 
more physical talent than a guy like Walker and, and really awesome. Like he was able to he was able to control like okay, make this throw, know when to make this throw, not know not to, when to take a risk, not to take a risk. Because Darnold was really giving free reign and, and legit, and he really had somebody to corral him. And now that he had somebody to corral him, keep him focused, say you know what it like like. I feel like Carolina and Denver is like the same team, like Bridgewater and like Darn in terms of like great defenses, good but emerging defenses, solid offenses with lots of weapons, don't lose a game. And like Donald, Don, uh, Donald's like basically your job is not to lose a game and make a few plays to win it. And so I feel like he's executing what he's supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah, they didn't have run. Yeah, I, I look at the, the Joe Brady effect. Uh, Joe Brady really has done a good job with elevating QBs, and we'll give these credit too. They've elevated their play under him. But you look at Sam Donald. How many people last year thought he was a bust? Thought he was done, and now he's went to the pan and he looks like just a totally different quarterback. So sometimes you just need a change of scenery and the right coaching, and you can work wonders. So I think the Panthers can make the playoffs, but to be a legit contender, I don't see that. You don't see it? No. Even with the defense? No, it's too early to tell. Not too early to tell? Yeah. yeah they're okay. changing. I really, I mean, there are a few teams you know that are going to be good and bad. Like the Jaguars, they're going to be awful. You can just go ahead and fuck them. Uh, the Bucks, they're going to be good. Those are, I mean, there are a few teams you know what they are, but a few teams that still have some questions. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, flip it around. Y'all go ahead and just share what, what, what your three takeaways from the season. Just, it could be just two. It don't matter. Uh, uh, so for me, two uh, big takeaways for me. Well, I, I really had three, but I, I can agree with the two if you would like me to. But I, I have three. Really, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Was, Number number one, you already know what number one is. We just, we've already talked about it. Mm-hmm. This, this, the uh, Vegas Raiders, man, that defense in the past, it's not and it's not just like the Raiders as a whole. Really talking about defense, like their defense is taking steps forward in terms of having a pass rush. Late last year, I think we, had, we were last in the league in sacks. We have, I think, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven sacks already in the first two games. We get out the quarterbacks. And not only is the pass rush getting there, the, the secondary is holding up. Nate Hobbs is a guy who's going to be on our rookie team. That's a guy that's putting the NFL on notice. It's a fifth round pick. It was a, that was a steal getting him, Nate Hobbs. And that guy is special, and he's made plays. The secondary is making plays, and they're getting interceptions. They're not rated. Quarterbacks are not just going to be able to feast on a rated secondary like in the past. And also, in terms of this, uh, an improvement from last year is this. My thing is this, like, for the Raiders to really make the step forward, it was going to have to – the defense was going to have to hold up, like, during, like, the last minute of games because they lost three straight games last year, Chargers, Dolphins, and Chiefs, in the last, in the last drive of games. But the, so far, the last two, we saw in the first one game in overtime uh, when they had got to Lamar and, and he caused him to fumble and the Raiders were able to score. There was one to first time holding up. And then late, when they could have – they were, when they were up 26-17, but – it felt like they're not. It felt like the Steelers could have like came back over because I was so used to seeing the Raiders just get basically walked down on and with no resistance, and that I was kind of expecting it to happen. When it didn't happen, I was pleasantly surprised. So shout out to the Raiders defense in particular. Second of all, uh, oh, Buffalo Bills. They they didn't just beat the Miami Dolphins. They kind of took their pants off and gave them a spanking. Mm-hmm. I was very really surprised by a Brian, Brian Flores, as we all know, comes from that Belichick tree, and you don't expect things like this to happen. His defense is – I mean, his team – well, yeah, literally, his defense and his offense fell apart. Tua got hurt through interception, got knocked out. Brissett didn't play well. They were they were down big early, and it got ugly early, and it was it was a bomb to watch. I mean, I was disappointed in the Dolphins because this is a team that – it's literally the Patriots 2.0 in terms of how it's co- well-coached. Solid defense, make it work on offense. Mm-hmm. I I was surprised at the at what I saw from them. Like, but I also have to give credit to the Bills because the Bills they want they win they won without maximizing Josh Allen, and that shows that. You, and the Dolphins aren't a, a bad team at all. I really trust imagination, but they, 
the fact that the Bills were able to win, like, on the ground, three rushing touchdowns combined from Zach Moss and um, from uh, Devin Singletary. And I, I really like the way the Bills were able to balance it out for the pass and the run game. So the Bills definitely deserve some, uh, some praise. And the Dolphins really put up a dud. And I hope they do the same thing this week as they play the Raiders. But, anyways, on to the next one. The, uh, the final one, really, for me, and this is one that really stands out in terms of the, is the Baltimore resolve and their poise down the stretch of the game and not, and not giving up. Because when they were down 21-7 to the uh, to Kansas City, I thought it was going to be ugly quick. And I thought that this was just going to get out of hand because I was like, no way Lamar can keep up with, with, with my home. But Lamar, Lamar proved no good or wrong. He came through late, stepped up, made some big plays, and I like the way he took control at the end when he said, "We're going to, I'm going for, it. we're going to get this, we're going to keep this, we're going to win the game." I like that because it shows just a young guy saying, "You know what? I'm not too, we're not, I'm not going to shy away from the moment." And he knows if you give Mahomes the ball back, it's game over. So this is Lamar. I like the way he took control of the situation. This stood out for me. So really, the Raiders' defense, the Bills' dominance, and really the Ravens' poise. And maintaining the confidence even when they trail throughout the whole game. Okay. Yeah, I, the big takeaway for me is the Ravens. I feel like all the Lamar haters have one thing they have to stop that, that he hasn't accomplished. It's, it was amazing for them to get that win. I love that call. You see the video, of John Harbaugh out it should go for it, and they all said that when and they get it. Uh, there's no better feeling than that. Uh, it was huge for them, for the Ravens to win it. I know the playoffs, a little, they meet again. But just to say we finally beat them, now you can go into a, a playoff game against whether it's in uh, Baltimore and Kansas City and think you really have a good chance. Because it's a, if you haven't beaten a team, you don't care who you are. It gets you mad a little bit. Like I remember Lamar uh, saying that the Chiefs were their kryptonite. Um, mm-hmm they were able to get that monkey off their back. So now I think they could potentially make a run this year. Uh, they do have some injuries they got to overcome with Marcus Peters and all the running backs. But I think the Ravens have a chance to do some special things. Uh, okay. But I, I can also say the Jaguars are going to be awful. And it's going to be interesting to see if, Urban, if the UFC job is open as long as it is laid down, will Urban consider taking it? I don't think he would because he had opportunity to take it and he didn't. Doesn't mean he wouldn't take it if he got the opportunity. This time. But uh, I think he wants to prove he can win in the NFL, but they're going to have to figure it out quickly if they save this season because right now it's not going down the right path. And then finally, uh, I'm waiting to see how long it'll take if the Bengals uh, fire uh, Zach Taylor. If Joe Brady will get that job, because you dig in trouble, inevitable. You dig uh, in trouble. Yeah, when your players call you out for not being aggressive, that's. I didn't hear that. And look, Who I'm not should have. I personally think you don't call out players in the media. You handle that stuff in house. But the fact that they did, <laughs> that's not it's new age, man. Back Taylor, it's new age, man. <laughs> yeah, Joe Brady keeps on heated and up in Carolina. That just makes too much sense not to put Joe Brady, Jamar Chase, and Joe Burrow back together in Cincinnati. Yeah, only missing is um Justin Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, let me get a shout out to Mike Fadden of the uh AFC Sound uh, podcast, man. Give him a play MD playlist, man. But he has some comments on the um live screen, live chat to say the uh Shouts out to the Ravens for their uh, tribute to Michael K. Williams, who passed, recently passed away up the wire. I didn't see the the tribute, but uh, I heard it was pretty good. But um, that that, that really um, caught me off guard when he passed away. But for the rest of peace to his family. Um, Zach Taylor might be in trouble. Yeah, he agreed. Yes, but the, the reporter, yeah, I'm not that guy. Um, I heard your last stream you know, talk to the uh, Jaguars reporter, and it's pretty good. But uh, appreciate you watching, man. But um, this is my next uh, segment right here. I got questions for both of y'all. I'm going to go ahead and answer it first, though. But I'm going to ask it. As the season progresses, what is the one thing that you believe will carry on into the rest of the season? What I mean by carry on to the rest of the season, I'm talking about traits, um, things such as uh, losing habits, um, teams getting 
going from bad to worse teams, going from, uh, you know, things that we're seeing right now is going to continue. So, for me, I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons, man. Is it? That's a wrap, man. That's a wrap for the Matt Ryan era in Atlanta. And I know the cap situation is pretty bad. And is it this? This ain't a hot take. This don't sound like a. This, not, this might sound like a hot take, but if I'm um, Jerry Fano, Terry Fano, the uh, GM, everything is on the table except uh, Kyle Pitts and uh, Calvin Ridley. And y'all know what I mean by that. And I was one of the ones that, before the season started, I kind of, I was um, kind of behind Matt Ryan. I thought Matt Ryan could, I thought it was not a good idea to move on from him. And there were some guys on uh, social media. I mean, I'm not, you know, bashing anybody. I, mean, I respect everybody's opinion, their content. There were guys that were adamant that the Falcons should move on from Matt Ryan. And draft Justin Fields. And I was just like, nah, man, just hang on to the guy, hang on to him. Trust your GM. You got a good GM. He comes from the uh, Saints uh, lineage. They're going to get it right. So they went ahead and drafted Kyle Pitts. I haven't heard anything about what Kyle Pitts is doing. I haven't heard anything, what type of impact he's made with the team. And Matt Ryan buying that offensive line is just getting. Obliterated. I know y'all saw that the meme online that's or that happened in week one, but they have lying kind of like flat on the, the field. And I mean, it's just thanks time to move on from that right now. Because I think the Falcons are going to be picking first in the draft. They got a good feeling of that. And um, they say that, you know, I don't know if y'all heard this or, or not, but they're saying that this year's uh, quarterback class is not that great, but. I disagree with that because around week six and seven, teams are going to start realizing that we need a quarterback. And then from there, we're going to start hearing names go around. Names get pushed up in the draft. So I just want to say, I think it's just the end of the road for, for Matt Ryan and Atlanta Falcons in that era. Your thoughts, please. Yeah, I think that the beginning of the end. I'm really surprised they kept him this past season. I guess the money may have been the main reason, and maybe they wanted yeah. to get shot. But yeah, I'll be shocked if Matt Ryan's in Atlanta Falcon next season. The big question go. go is, does he go? Because I don't know that. I, I, that's the big question. I don't know where he goes. They may either release him or trade him, where he gets to decide. I think he owe that to him because he's been loyal uh, Falcon for many. Years. Still can't believe they choked that Super Bowl against the Patriots, but that's. Conversation for another day. Uh, but, yeah, time to move. All right, well, I got another comment from Mike Patty. He said he can't move on from Matt Ryan because of the money owed in time team. Yeah, you're right. I looked into that the other day on um, the contracts and all that. And, like, if they, gotta, if they had to cut ties from there, it would be like $26 million cap hit. And I'm just like, man, you know, man, you know, you could have. Maybe he could have restructured or something. They could have put more pieces around him. Because I, I, I think that's the issue with Atlanta. This is, this is a void of talent right now. Void of talent, a lot of key positions, and they just can't – nothing they can do right now. So it'd be better if they could get a, a successor for him. And he, if he's not, you know, bothered by that, get a successor and, you know, let him learn the ropes or move on. What you got, Lil? Lil what are your thoughts? Oh, um, on Matt Ryan, it's really a sad ending because he was really a, uh, he's had a Hall of Fame top caliber career, and really to see it see it end like this in terms of not being able to uh, like he you would think that he would go out like at least on a Super Bowl caliber like with a type of Super Bowl caliber squad. I never thought it would end like this, but I think we really might be seeing the beginning of the end from him, and it's really gonna be sad because. I feel like he's still uh, when he's when he's he has the right help and the right pieces. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But I think he just probably I don't think he I can't see him playing with another team. I think I think he'll retire before he go to another team. And then it leads to the team now you were talking about so about the Falcons being a team for you that's like really going from bad to worse. Really, I think it's the New York Giants, the team they play this week. So it's our run two bad teams. <laughs> really? Bro. It's already. Judge? Yeah. Dillo, 
they just – I watched that game, man, against the Washington football team. They just looked sloppy, man. That game shouldn't have been that close. T dropping touchdown passes. And it just – y'all saw the way the um, – the finals the, when the game was about to go about to end the game, um, Tyler Taylor Tyler Heineke Heineke, he just tore their defense up methodically. Yeah, and they didn't even adjust, man. I was like, wow, man, what are y'all doing? Is this sloppy football team? Go ahead. Uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, the one thing I'll say is I believe the Lions will have a losing record. And they may get the number one pick, but at least you can say they'll be competitive because uh, they gave the 49ers a run for their money. And that uh, Packers game was close. I I think uh, Dan Campbell made a mistake. They should have kicked the field goal. I know it's fourth and one and made it, and made it where it would have, if they, uh, the Packers scored a touchdown, it would only still be a one possession game. But they, I understand what you're trying to do. You're going on the road, it's only. Uh, fourth and one, and he's a running head coach, and they should have ran the play through it, but uh, he's trying to send a message that we feel like we can uh, make short yardage situations, and he believes in his team, basically. But at least they'll be competitive, and I wouldn't be surprised if a few years their team that people are talking about. Okay. You got anything to add, Lil? Oh, I see what Brian's saying, and I agree. I do think that the, uh, Dan Campbell is a, is a, is a solid guy, that, like a defensive guy that can really turn his team around. But also, I have a question for Brian. Like, I really have a question for Brian. Like, do you think if they get the number one pick that they should take a quarterback and think that Jared Goff is the guy? Because my answer, I think Jared Goff can be the guy for them. I just think you just got to – they need more pieces. They really need more pieces, especially at the wide receiver and, and at the linebacker spot. They're really their weakest spots. And the secondary as well, because I think they drafted Jeff Okuda last year. He tore his ACL. They, they need reinforcements in the secondary, and they need weapons in terms of receivers. But do you think that if Jared Goff can be that guy? Because I think he can. They can help them be, get out of the abyss. Or do you think they need another guy in the center? I think Jared Goff is good. Uh, when I look at the QBs in this class, you probably would say he would uh, be better. The one guy I really like that a lot of people are starting to talk about is this kid Carson Strong out of Nevada? I really like him, and I I wouldn't be surprised if he's the first rounder. I'm not sure if you take him uh, at the number one pick. And the beauty about having the number one pick, if you get it, you don't want to use it. You can just trade back, get more assets, and still probably get a solid player at the place you trade back to. So uh, yeah, I think Jared Goff could be the guy. Me personally, I would try to move on from him. And it gives you more time. It's kind of like what the Jets did. They moved on from Sam Donald. So give that coaching staff more of a fresh start, uh, even though Zach Wilson has a lot of work to do. Because I saw a stat that said uh, he's already thrown more interceptions this year, this year than he has at BYU last year. So that tells you the NFL is a whole other beast. And uh, you can do a lot in college with the NFL. It'll humble you, and I'm not saying he's arrogant, but NFL will humble you, and you're playing with the best of the best. Many so, um, so go ahead. Um, another thing, I I mean, interrupt you, but another thing is, and I know a lot of people saying Tiggs is gonna draft a, 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 a number one, and they should say like the quarterback, and, and perhaps they should, but uh, um, they obviously now they have the backup quarterback in the NFL. So, uh, now, Davis Mills is a starter, and obviously Deshaun Watson is right behind him. But I think this is that time. I really want to see what Davis Mills does, like, because this is a guy they drafted in the third round out of Stanford with a lot of promise, a tall, lean guy that can move around somewhat, has some mobility, even though he's a big, sturdy guy, can move around. I really want to see if they give Davis Mills a chance to see could he potentially be a quarterback of the – like, in the future, like, a, could he be there in the future? And I really want to see what he does – starting his third day against Carolina, going against a really good defense, really kind of throwing them to the wolves. But I really want to see if Davis Mills ready for this because that was a guy that really rose up the draft stock is is uh come out everything went on last last uh early in the in the year. His stock really rose. I really want to see what Davis Mills does. I'm really excited to see him work. Unfortunately Tyrod goes down and he was really keeping that team afloat and competitive in the first two games. But I really want to see what Davis Mills does. Yeah, 
Yeah, oh. I, uh, one of the scouts that I followed, they were saying if Davis Mills had stayed in school, he would have been the first quarterback draft. They really, really believe that. So Davis Mills has a lot of promise. Uh, I'm not so sure if he can be the guy right now, but then he has a chance to be uh, really, really good. They'll take some time to, and this is a perfect opportunity. Uh, I think they're at home and, and see what he's made of. Uh, what, would you have anything to add? Uh, let's see. Let me ask you one more, another question for this, man. Do you think the Dover's having a buyer's remorse with a drafting tool based on what he saw in Justin Herbert? Because if Herbert turns out the way we think he's going to turn out, that could be a historical conversation. We could be talking about that for years, man. You know what I mean? The Dolphins had a chance to draft Justin Herbert, but they ran with uh, Tua. It could be like, I'm not calling it the whole Sam Bowie effect, but it can get that way. You know what I'm saying? So what do y'all think? Because then, then we hear these rumors about them drafting, well, not drafting, but trading for Watson, these conflicting reports that are coming out, outlets saying that they are know for a fact that the uh, Dolphins who are interested in Watson, they don't care. They're not really trying to play him this year. They want to try and get him ready for next year. This, all these other conflicting reports are out. So, actually, what's your thoughts on Do you think they would have Darvin that they have uh, Bosch or most on that situation? I'll go. Right. I, think they made the, I think the Dolphins made the right decision to take Tua. I feel like he always loved to do this, be the prisoner of the moment. He's been better so far. It's definitely been better. But I still t think Tua still has time. He's got to have to figure out a way to stay healthy. And he's really still developing. Like, sometimes we look at these guys doing really well in college, and we think they're a finished product. product but they still got some development to do. And so if he can stay healthy – I think he can. He was pretty solid last year. He can be even better this year. Uh, but I, I think it's way too early to do all stuff like that. Uh, Justin Herbert, you were talking about Lo, are two really good quarterbacks. And one may end up being better than the other, but I won't just blame the Dolphins. You can make the case all the other teams before the Dolphins could have taken Justin Herbert, too. So, uh, I, don't, I don't like being a prisoner. Moment. Gotcha. Um, my, um, I think you're going to be upset what I'm about to tell you. But, heck, yes, they should be frustrated and kicking themselves and scratching themselves and doing whatever. Because you had a chance to take Justin Herbert. You're telling me Justin Herbert's a guy who threw 31 touchdowns, 10 interceptions as a rookie, behind the worst line statistically in the National Football League with the Chargers. He had the worst line. So you're telling me he did that with the worst line, and you're telling me that with a solid O-line in Miami and a good defense in Miami, that just Herbert made a damn difference between them making the playoffs last year and not making it. Like, they went they, – they went. you saw what Tua did in the last game of the season against Buffalo with a chance to get in. <laughs> <laughs> you saw we it was the Buffalo had nothing to play for. He played a you, I think Herbert was the difference between them making a playoffs at night. Like and I know how I saw it. And I think people are saying, oh, two was growing. I heard Kyler Carroll make this point. You can tell after about 15 or 20 games whether somebody's a good quarterback in the NFL or not. About 15 games that you really can say this guy is good enough, this guy is not good enough. I can really – you could just tell to it is he, – he's not a bust, but he's not what everybody thinks he is. And he, and he doesn't have guys running wide open routes in the NFL anymore. I mean, like in college, like he did in college. They aren't wide open. You aren't going to find Devontae Smith wide open for the national championship game anymore. It, like 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 that anymore, like oh, consistently, like he had at Bama. And when, when two – and another difference, and I want to get to, Herbert can play – like he, he got a script quarterback. There's a Tua can win only can, you only can win with two if you have a formula, a good running game and a good defense. Herbert team the seven got the charge seven and nine, so this this just says a lot. All right, so you say he needs a script. <laughs> isn't that some? Isn't that like <laughs> what Jalen Hurst need or no? 
No, because Jalen Hurts doesn't. They don't have a great defense in Philly. Really? Say, you think he's sure? Ain't when I saw the week two, one and two. Ain't when I saw week one. Man. Yeah. I'm such a costume for that line. Mind, BB. They were going against that team that you just highlighted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They look good against the Falcons. They look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I do think Philly, Philly, okay, like I said, Philly, okay, that's they may be, you may be right, but Tua is more of a like there's no formula, like there's they they saying you have to win with Tua, but you need him to not be turn the ball over. You don't need to the Dolphins don't need a quarterback that you have to say don't turn the ball over. They need a Herbert guy that can push the ball downfield just consistently, and just Tua just not that guy. I feel like they had drafted Herbert, they would have made the playoffs last year. I think you would. I think you and me. I think we can at least agree on that. Yeah, I think. I think that's why these um, reports keep coming up, man. Because they, they feel it. They regret it. They not gonna come out and admit it. They not gonna even mess because if they say that in the public, that could like damage his damage his confidence. You know, so they're gonna leak stuff out like this without actually going out and saying, man, but. I just think that's going to be historical, a conversation like that, you know, down the road. They could be doing a 30 for 30 on that, man. I mean, if Herbert turns out to be that that good, like Marino good, they could be talking about this forever, man. For real. The yep. thing I'll say, if, if you want to say, I, I like your point about him um, and, and, and Alabama. About, but the one thing I'll say is, if you want to just say that they need an upgraded quarterback, that that's fair, and you're getting Deshaun Watson. That's a bad. That's maybe a better uh, argument. But to just automatically say they made a mistake because Justin Herbert maybe looks a little bit better, maybe a little, a little bit really. A Come on, lot. man. I'm, I'm not gonna just. I think Come that's on, man. You see, because situation matters, and I'm not sure if he has the greatest coaches in mind. Not saying Brian Flores. Can't coach, he can, but I'm not sure if he, if you think of him as a QB developer. So <sighs> that's why they may need a veteran like a Deshaun Watson, a guy who's already developed and is one of the elite quarterbacks of the game. But I don't think they'll get Deshaun until next season. So you might as well just ride it out with you. Man, if I'm, I wouldn't even touch Deshaun Watson until that stuff's cleared up. I wouldn't touch. Him. Um, kind of stupid of Texas to hold on to him. They could have unloaded him a while back and got a, you know everything for him, but they're gonna be they want to be stubborn. So that's what happens. But on to the last uh, topic, and it's another question. It's going into week three, and for this question, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna go ahead first, but I'll ask. What are you looking forward to in week three? I'm just being really honest with you. I'm looking forward to. Rams versus Bucks. Well, Bucks versus Rams. The game will be in uh, SoFi Stadium this time. A rematch from last year when uh, the Rams' defensive line just went after Tom Brady and pretty much and put him away. But, you know, the Bucks won a Super Bowl. But look forward to this game. It'll be my uh, game of week preview for this week. Uh, we're going just looking into this, the scouting report, looking at, you know, injuries, what – how this team, you know, how will Brady respond this time? I think this will be the first challenge for his offensive line. See how the Rams uh, attack that uh, that secondary. I think that secondary, the Bucks uh, secondary is suspect. If they don't get pressure, they don't send pressure with their um, four four. I think you can mess with them. You can, I think you can uh, touch the uh, Tampa Bay, according to what what I saw with the Dallas Cowboys. They, but you got to have some good uh, weapons on the outside. Get thoughts. What are y'all looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Monday night when the Eagles go to Dallas. That should be interesting. Uh, I really want to see uh, if the Cowboys could get a streak going or if the Eagles can respond after a close loss to the 49ers. And, I mean, I think everybody always wants to see the Cowboys since they're America's team. So. All right. Um, I really, I'm really anticipating the Packers 49ers game with well, Aaron Rodgers versus they really really stout Niners defense. Um, Packers Niners they really have a game to be potential to be one of the really top notch games of the week. And in terms of you having like a 
But like when you see Garoppolo, Rogers, <laughs> you see Gar- I think Garoppolo, you really going to see if Garoppolo really is that guy because that Packers defense is atrocious. I saw Jared Goff move the ball numerous on numerous drives against them yesterday. So I think that Garoppolo has a chance to really have a good game against them. But also I want to see what um, if Aaron Jones can keep that consistent going in the run game. He had four touchdowns, three receiving, one run yesterday. And I really want to see against a stout nine of defense, can they run the ball and establish a run and, and let Aaron Rodgers get going? Okay. Okay. You got anything to add, bro? No, I'm good. All right, man. That's um, that's it for tonight. That's all we have for y'all for right now. Um, would y'all like to um let everybody know where they can follow y'all on social media? Uh, you can follow me at Brian a day Shalabada. That's not my name. My Twitter account. If you tap that in, you'll find. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you can follow me at uh, Leowin uh, Jr. L I A U D W I N again Jr. J R. So that's that's me. All right, man. You can follow me at Strike Seven Sports on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just type it in; it'll pop up. Have a blessed day. Peace. We out. Peace out. <laughs>